this is uh, this is bad interviewer like about face. But what I was just thinking of this, and I didn't want to let this question go. Um, have, so you've probably seen some of like the new arcade games that people like new retro games like. Um, Oh gosh, I'm gonna blank on the like NG dev team or something yeah. that they're making where it's like new Neo Geo games yes. or things like that. Have you ever thought about getting any of those for? Yeah, the no, absolutely. Um, my my sister was actually at an arcade in Austin, Texas, and they had uh, some sort of uh, program with a, uh, like a local. Like one of the local universities had okay. classes in like game development, or whatever, okay. and they were actually developing arcade games and then putting them in the cabinet. That's amazing! Yeah, right. Oh my god, I know. that's the coolest thing I've ever heard. Like, like that's making me sad that I'm missing out. Yeah, on I know, right? Games. Totally. Yeah, because it's like literally anywhere in the country, if you you could have a program where people are learning how to develop games, you yeah, make basic games and then put them into the like. That's what's so great again about the design of these, like. We were talking about the outside of them and the physicality of that, but the inside of them, it was really uh, uh, like smart how they designed like the JAMA system yeah. and the JAMA harnesses and the wiring and all of that. And you could literally, um, with the right adapters and whatnot, you know, have your Raspberry Pi hooked up to all of that, right? <laughs> so you the the possibilities are really endless. That's crazy. It's it's making me sad that like a lot of those games are probably just like disappearing once oh, that yeah, kid yeah. like graduates totally. or whatever. That's... Yeah, who's preserving all of those. Right? I know, I know. That's crazy. Oh man. Um so so speaking of specific games, you know, you've you've got these what's it, there's thirteen in here, I think you said there's thirteen now. Well I guess sorry, there's thirteen cabinets. There's twelve working uh, <laughs> okay. working machines. Yeah. One of them I just picked up and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. Sure. Um and you have other stuff at home too, right? Like you have you have other boards. I have a have lot other... of boards. Yeah. Um, it's funny what comes when you buy a cabinet, or a lot of the ones that I've bought. Like if you're going to try to get a good deal on a cabinet, yeah. you kind of don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> but sometimes you end up with like a board. You might pay like three hundred dollars for a beat up cabinet, and it might have a seven hundred dollar board inside of it or whatever. So I I definitely have a bunch of boards that have kind of come out of you know different things or like you know games that didn't have dedicated cabinets at all yeah and, um, so I definitely have a lot of boards I have a lot of arcade parts we'll say but um, I don't have any full working cabinets at home okay yeah um, what what are your like you know because you're still growing your collection yeah. to some degree what are your like holy grail I know we've talked about this a little bit but for the show like, yeah yeah well I'm a I'm a simple man. I, I wouldn't call it a holy grail. <laughs> sure. But I definitely want a Capcom, like a big blue, would be great. Oh, okay. um, I don't know. I'm really thinking now. I mean, I games or particular cabinet designs, I guess. I... Yeah. Uh, oh, there's actually a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we got time. We keep talking about getting a, stamp, uh, a driving game. We don't have a driving game in the arcade oh, right now. Yeah, we definitely yeah. need one. But I definitely want a stand-up one because the space is small and I you couldn't put a full like sit down driving right, game in here yeah. but um, like an outrun would be great which is totally attainable but or like Ridge Racer there's like yeah. a stand up Ridge Racer um, uh, I don't I'm a huge beat em up fan yeah if too. I could have every <laughs> Konami like beat em up cabinet you know like I would love to just have a row of like Sunset Riders and Simpsons and Turtles in Time and X Men. Um, I, I played Metamorphic Force like fairly recently oh, wow. for the first time, and that that game is so good. It's amazing. Well, that, yeah, that's what's interesting about the emulators too. Is like there's like beat 'em up set. I mean, I I thought I knew about a lot of them. Yeah, but there's so, so many of them. Um, I don't know. I definitely would like to get a a couple of candy cabs mm -hmm. like. Uh, I would I would take any of them at this point. They're they're super hard to get here, obviously. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm a big Neo Geo fan. Um, I would take a, a four slot Neo Geo candy oh, yeah. cab, uh, or a Sega Blast City or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm really trying to think. I'm trying to give you a good answer here. <laughs> 
Though the Neo Geos are great because they're just so easy to yeah. slot things in yeah. and out. And, and a lot of their stuff, I was a little surprised because I know, you know, when I was really the heyday of my collection was like a decade ago. Um, and I, I just kind of assumed prices had gone through the roof like they have with everything else. But there's a fair number of Neo Geo games, like good ones, that are yeah. still pretty affordable. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the ones I want, though, are also <laughs> very expensive. <laughs> I want Prehistoric Isle, too. I just want, oh, I just want like, yeah. a real cart of that. But, yeah, yeah. Um, Crystal Castles. Do you know that game? No, I... Uh, it is it has Neo Geo. No, 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 no. It's uh, I was just thinking about like other cabinets that I uh, would be on my list. Um, oh, I want I'm gonna say Atari, but I don't actually know. It's a, it's a, it's like one you play with a trackball. Oh, okay. And okay. but the side art on this game, it, it has the, it's the most beautiful cabinet. For, if I was gonna pick a cabinet from like the way the cabinet looks, yeah. it would be Crystal Castles. It has the most amazing side art, and um. And like marquee and everything, the cabinet is beautiful. And yeah, I, th that's a, that's what's weird though is like, and this is not a knock on on anyone coming into an arcade and wanting to play a game, but you know people want to play like Frogger, Miss Pac-Man, sure, and yeah. and uh, Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. You know things you know. Yeah. And you know there's so many like weird random games out there, right? Right. right. It's like if you made an arcade full of those. I don't know, maybe you would make, get a lot of people to come in, <laughs> who knows. But yeah, Crystal Castles is definitely on my list. Yeah, we, we talked a lot about that, I think, when I first came in here, because I, I immediately went to like Alien vs. Predator yeah. and like Captain America, the, the Avengers. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely that way. Like, if I walk into a, an arcade and it's just like Ninja Turtles and Simpsons and Miss Pac Man, it's like, oh, okay, like, that's fine. You know, yeah. I, I get it, but like. I'm probably not going to stay very long, but yeah. If, yeah. But if I walk in and it's like Night Slashers and right? Tumble Pop <laughs> and um, and House of the Dead Four, right? and like you know, like I'm like, oh man, this is the place to be. This yeah. is well, metamorphic force. Well, that's like um, that's why I wanted the Spider Man beat him up. Yeah, like, yeah. I think that's a really unsung like beat. -em -up. Absolutely, and yeah. It's also, but it was also conveniently for me, a, you know, a uh, intellectual property that people are very familiar with, right? And right. And want to yeah. play. So, and it's so funny to me that that game has like Namor and Hawkeye, right? Because back right. in the day, like who, like no one would have wanted to play as those, and now people actually want to play as Hawkeye over Spider Man. Like, <laughs> what world do we live in? And even Namor, there, because you know. They know him now. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember playing that and just, you know, it not really phasing me because I had a more general knowledge of superheroes. But yeah, nowadays it is weird. It's like, why is Daredevil not in there? Like, what? Right? What is Namor doing in there instead right? of like Daredevil or, or even like like Moon Knight or like yeah. Nick Cage or something? Like, some, yeah. Uh, or not Nick Cage, Luke Cage. Luke Cage. I would, I would definitely <laughs> play an arcade that game would with be amazing. Nick Cage in it. <laughs> See, one of the, I'm some one of these universities. There's a game developer in training, like making a Nicolas Cage beat him up. Nicolas Cage beat him up. Oh my god, that would be. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna pay off all of his uh, trilobite. Debt. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Buying too many castles and fossils. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really funny story. This is like third hand, but there's a really funny story I heard on a Simpsons commentary okay. about David X. Cohen, one of the writers uh, for The Simpsons and the co-creator of Futurama, Futurama yeah, yeah. going to um, an auction house to buy trilobites <laughs> and then getting outbid <laughs> by, by Nicolas Cage, Cage who oh bought every god. single one of them. Oh like, my god. <laughs> That's wild. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I know we had talked about kind of that weighing out like putting up the games that are going to like bring people in versus the games that you want to yeah. like, promote to people. Yeah. It's, I think that's been the hardest part uh, in some ways. It's just like curating the right like mix. Right. Um, Cause I mean, I don't want to like swap. Well, I have a, a half of my machines are dedicated, so I don't want to like, you know, swap those right. out. Yeah. Uh, but the ones that I can swap stuff out, I, th I thought I would be swapping more often but at the right now the frequency at which people come in i think 
they want to come in and come back and see that same game. Right, yeah. At least for a little while. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Um, and you, I mean, you do other stuff here, too. Um, we're, we're recording this on top of your, your counter that is full of retro games that you sell and trade and what have you. Yeah, that's that's been super interesting too. And in some ways that I was more comfortable with that part because I've been <laughs> collecting, you know, console games for so long. Right. Um and I also love console consoles and all the different, you know, iterations and generations of those as well. So that that's been a lot of fun. And I and also in some ways like working on the arcade machines which, you know, had very low consequence of me, like, screwing it up. Or, and, you know, because they were already, like, half broken anyway, right? right? Yeah, so yeah. it's like, uh, I'll try this and see it. But that also gave me more confidence in, like, con- doing console repairs. Because it's basically <laughs> the same concepts, right, but just yeah. at a different scale. Yeah, so, sl- yeah slightly like, smaller scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's been really interesting kind of doing those two things in parallel. It, um... You know, I, I, f- <clears throat> I feel like when when you're when you're younger, you can kind of like romanticize, like, oh, it'd be so cool working in a game store, like you get to play video games and trade video games and stuff all day. But you and I have talked about how like a lot of those interactions get kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, not to sh- not to shame any of my our fellow gaming enthusiasts, but yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't know in what particular direction you want to go, because there's many <laughs> we could go in, but yes. Um, yeah, it's like really like, I mean, I guess it's it's like a retail job at the end right. of the day, right? Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I, the, I mean, obviously, I've, I'm, I'm a very strong believer in kind of like that old school kind of service mentality, and you know, I, I want to make sure that everyone is happy when they leave here, sure. um, whether they're playing the games or buying games, and... Um, yeah, lots of strange interactions. Us, <laughs> all of us video game folk are an interesting bunch of people, for sure. Yeah, I, I think video game secondhand dealers are kind of at that like <laughs> nightmare intersection where they're they're dealing with like a lot of very socially awkward nerds. Yeah, and also like the pawn shop crowd. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um, yeah, that's why I have a Mr. Potato Head over there full of other p- potato heads that I bought from a guy who, he, he gave it to me for a dollar, so... But yeah, yeah you, you told me some stories about like people coming in here and just trying to like trade in anything. Anything, yeah, it's like, yeah, video game store is like a catch-all for like any pop culture, or, like right, whatever, right. and yeah, so, yeah, people have brought in some weird stuff, for sure. <laughs> but it's all, and it's, and, uh... It's also, I was going to say sad, but it's not sad, but it's all, the rare games that come in too, like I've seen actually some really cool stuff that I never thought I would see before, but then they sit on the shelf for right. a long time. And I'm like, I should just sell this on eBay. Yeah. Or, you know, because it's going to sit here for two years until that one person that knows what this, you know, weird rhythm game, yeah. is, you know, the Japanese like version of this weird rhythm game, like who's going <laughs> to buy that, right? But it's cool to have it and see it, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're also in kind of the weird position of there's, like, a gigantic pop culture, like, comic video game store in the same yes, city. Yes, right around the corner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah for sure. Um, but that's fine. They can sell Pokemon plushies. Right. And, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a slightly different dynamic, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just... I. When I went to Japan, I went to Super Potato, which is a well-known like video game right, store, yeah. and um, yeah, I just I in some ways may, maybe now that we're talking through this, maybe that was my agenda this whole time was like <laughs> the arcade thing was like a way into somehow owning a video game store so that I could somehow open up my own like Super Potato, which is <laughs> when you look, I don't really have that much product compared to that place. But no, I mean, so yeah, Super Potato is gigantic. on a whole other level. Yeah. But I don't know. That's like there's something really cool about walking into a store and like just seeing 
all the variety. Yeah. Uh, and like things you just never saw out in the wild, like as yeah. a kid, right? And being able to go and see that somewhere. And in some ways, that's where game store, you know, retro game shops mm-hmm. have kind of become this like hybrid thing between the preservation conversation yeah. and, you know, a, just a retail place because that might be the only place you ever see an item is at a game shop. So. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I when I went to Japan years ago, um, it, it was it was pretty cool. Like even if it was stuff that I wasn't interested in, just walking into it and just seeing the like, because it, it is on a whole other level over yeah. there. Like even the most well stocked you know retro game store in the U.S., I've never seen anything on the level of like any of a number of Japanese game Absolutely, stores. Yeah. You know, it'll just be like wall to wall, you know, Super Famicom games yep. and. Just seeing the like <clears throat> weird, quirky artwork staring back at you, um, you know. Again, even if it's not something that you want to buy, it's just like a cool environment to be in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it is. I, I don't. This is like a whole other episode. We can come back and <laughs> do another episode on like the collector market and how like in a lot of ways like the retro gaming scene has really changed and not for the better over the last like 10 years yeah it's gotten weird I think for sure Um, yeah again it's like and that's what's so I think it's a hard conversation to have because on one hand all of us that are collecting which is you know pretty much anyone who's talking about any of this or listening to anything like this is doing this right you, you sure you buy you find that game and then you go put it on your shelf and then it's like, <laughs> do you even play it you know it's like uh like i don't know i just we uh turbo graphic 16 walked, came in the door the other day really and I, yeah and I, I i never had one and um uh so i took it home and then I, all of a sudden i'm like buying all these like turbo graphics <laughs> games on ebay right and and uh i there was like a complete inbox, like sealed, like volleyball game, like really crappy game. Yeah, Sonic Spike, and I get it, and I'm just like, what do I do with this? Like, <laughs> am I gonna practice what I preach, or am I open this and play this really crappy game, or I'm just gonna put it on the shelf? And I, I ended up selling it to somebody. So <laughs> <laughs> it can be their decision to make. Yeah, yeah, yeah just pass the buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It 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 is. Um, well, that, that's a cool part of of you know your your job. Is that like I know? Well, a cool aspect of I guess kind of how you handle things because you you you'll trade and you'll buy and you'll sell stuff. It won't just be like oh here's the stock price that I'm going to give you because then I'm going to sell it at the store. Like you you'll sometimes buy stuff and then just like keep it for your own collection. Yeah, yeah. Um, or and conversely, like I know you've unloaded a bunch of your collection like like classic games. Yeah, through the store. Yeah, I've I've definitely sold some games at the store that I from my collection that I never thought I, when I got when I attained them I was like <laughs> I'm never gonna let go of this and um, you know the fun part about that is because there, there's so many games like you don't have time to play to to discover and play all these games sure, right yeah and you're gonna miss certain moments when a certain game comes out and you you're just gonna miss it right and yeah um so like right now like there's a ton of like ps3 and 360 games coming in and it's all like just like filler right yeah. like not, not great games right but when you really stop and look at these libraries there's like some interesting stuff yeah. in there and yeah i'll take a game home and i'll play it for a few days and then bring it back and you know i never would have played that game otherwise and uh this other guy Rob that works here, you know, he's been doing the same thing, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're talking about these like weird yeah. 360 games that, yeah, it's a five dollar game, but I don't know, it was yeah. fun to talk about it and have that shared experience with him about it. So, yeah, now <clears throat> now's definitely the best time to be getting PS3 and 360 oh, games because yeah, right? they're like they're like dirt cheap, dirt cheap, yeah. And their libraries are so huge. Yeah, yeah. There's there's all sorts of uh, there's all sorts of cool stuff in there. That's what we'll we'll come back and we'll do another episode. Yeah, yeah. That's we'll all through, like <laughs> <laughs> like like retro favorites. Um, but speaking of retro favorites, swing it back around to to arcades. Um, what are what are some of your and I guess this sort of collides with the like holy grails question. Yeah, but yeah. like, what are some of your 
favorite arcade games, either because you think they're really good or just stuff that's like wonderfully nostalgic for you. Like again, I'm torn between like <laughs> the real answer versus the interesting like I mean, podcast answer. We can be here for a while, <laughs> and not in a hurry. Um, you know, I just I keep I always go back to beat 'em ups because I don't yeah. know that's what I have the most nostalgia for. I mean, I and and fighting games too. Um, yeah, there was something really cool about both of those. I definitely have more nostalgia for beat 'em ups than I do fighting games, but something about like the big, really well animated sprites, and especially yeah. at the time that those games were out, like you could not get that same experience on a home console. Absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. I think, and even now, they look great. Like they look yeah. fantastic when you go yeah. back. Like I mean, again, the Spider-Man game. I mean, those are probably the biggest sprites for a beat 'em up that I can think of. And man, it, that game just looks so good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the the actual character sprites. The animation of their actual like punching and kicking is not the best I've ever seen, <laughs> but like the the actual sprite art is really good. They they did a really good job of of making them look like lush and fluid, but also making it look like the old kind of pulp comic pages yeah, too. Yes, like yeah, the, the color and the style is very much like old comic books. Yeah, absolutely. And it's interesting because Captain America, you mentioned that game too. That game also had a very kind of like art like brushy type of style yeah. in it but also the scale of those sprites are like the Tiny. complete other end of the spectrum yeah um yeah i just think beat em ups are just really beautiful games you know going back and playing them now you know another interesting thing about having an arcade is um some of the the older guys that have come in to play want to play like classic stuff and they yeah. really introduced me to a lot of classic games that i kind of wrote off and in some ways, they're a lot more interesting than beat em ups, which are kind of like, kind of monotonous, right? <laughs> right, yeah. Um, and so I don't know. It's definitely just given me. I've had a lot of. I've had a lot of different perspectives presented to me, and then the ability to kind of like reevaluate kind of how I feel about all of these games. Like this game, Mister Do, that this one guy comes in and plays all the time. It's actually a really, really good game. Like I like it better than Pac-Man and better than Dig Dug, and it's kind of like a weird hybrid of both of those games. And I never would have played that game in a million years. You, you know how like um, when when you were a kid, you'd walk into some place, and if it had a video game cabinet, and like you you would find them in weird places back yeah. in the day too. Like there'd always be one in like the pizza parlor yeah. or like. Um, you know that kind of place, and they're you know they'd have a ton in like the bowling alley or things. But like every once in a while, you'd go into like a restaurant or some little store or something, yeah. and they'd have an arcade cabinet, and like you just gravitate towards that, even if it was something you were completely uninterested in. Oh, totally. So I feel like I played a bunch of Mr. Do just because <laughs> it was like in some restaurant. And I I don't really like it but it no. was like but it was like in oh, i don't hate it it's just you know <laughs> but it was just like in this restaurant that we used to go to sometimes it's like oh mr do that's just, funny that's it's, it's a few more seconds of my life that i don't have to be not playing video <laughs> right, games right. thank god <laughs> wait so what is your favorite classic arcade game? um well i have i have a, a bunch of different ones and it's and it's funny like you said there was stuff that i loved as a kid and that i would just like seek out um yeah. you know as as a kid although again you were kind of beholden to what was available in the yeah. area especially when you don't have a car yeah um but then post emulation there's all the stuff that i've discovered that i'm like these games are amazing like i would have killed to have had these yeah. at my you know yeah. fingertips back then um <clears throat> so definitely as a as a kid one one that i was really really into was the dungeons and dragons oh that's those, a great game. those two the tower of doom yeah. and um it was Shadow over Mistara, Mistara, I think, was the second one. Um, those games were so great, and and they kind of corrected that monotony of the beat 'em up because yes. there were like multiple, many, many points in the game where you got to choose where you would go, and the game would play out like wildly differently. Yeah. Um, so that was definitely like a, a real favorite. I I think I beat Tower of Doom in an arcade, and oh, then wow. I I don't think I ever found. Uh, Shadow of Mastara enough to, to get through the whole thing. Um, I was also a big G.I. Joe. John and I both are big G.I. Joe fans. Okay. Uh, so the G.I. Joe arcade game, that yeah. was one that I, I feel like 
Uh, it's it's a good game, but I think what really attracted me to it the most was just how rare it was to find it yeah. <laughs> any place. Because yeah, yeah. um, that was another one that was like kind of at the tail end of arcades right. in, in the U.S. Um, I also really liked Tumble Pop for some reason. Mm. The one with the little guys with the vacuum cleaners. Yeah, yeah. And, and I usually don't go for those kind of like arena not really a puzzle game but like right. I feel like it would be grouped with that um, but something about just like how diverse the enemy selection was and just like the graphical style I, I really liked that one a lot um, post emulation things that I've discovered I love Night Slashers like love it love yeah. it love it that's such a like weird crazy we did an episode of it last um I think it was last Halloween. We did like a, a Halloween episode of Night Slashers, uh, just so like gross and gory and weird. And it's it's sad because uh, Data East, the company that made it, has done all of these like collections over the years, and they never put Night Slashers on it because then they would have to rate it M. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> like a hard M. But you can play. It. They released it on Switch. So. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's as it's a, as like a Switch, Switch. digital. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think that was the version that we did the okay. the. Um, the episode with but yeah no that's one that i really really loved um metamorphic force that was again i only played that a few you know i had read about it but i only played it a few years ago and i was like oh my god this is amazing yeah like so good um capcom did a really good job releasing a bunch of their kind of yeah recently too yeah i had never really played a lot of those games until that switch collection came out yeah and those also, also are awesome games. They should uh, do a Dungeons and Dragons uh, collection. They, they've done it a couple times. I had them. I had them on PS3, I think. Yeah. But yeah, they did it digitally on PS3 and yeah. Steam. Back in the day, they had uh, a Saturn port that never got oh. released in the U.S. It was that was like one of the hardest, most expensive Saturn games to find. Wow. Um, <laughs> which I actually got during the last recession because everybody was selling stuff cheap. Just <laughs> trying to pay their bills. Um, and it's almost an arcade perfect port, I think, yeah. but it's all in Japanese. Right. And then I also picked up the, um, the PS3 version had a Japanese physical got version. It, got it, okay. But yeah, it's all in, all in Japanese. Japanese. Yeah, they should, they should do a, uh, a physical US version. So, in... I don't know if you've seen the South Park episode about Casa Bonita. No. Okay, so there is this... I think a lot of people saw this episode of South Park about this Mexican restaurant called Casa Bonita that has an arcade in it. Okay. Um, but in the town I grew up in, there was actually... The, this restaurant, Casa Bonita, actually existed. There was, oh, there was like okay. one of like five of them, I think. And it just happened that there was one in... I don't, in it, it, it was the... The inspiration behind the South Park. Episode. Okay. Anyway, but they had a really, really amazing arcade. And when you were talking about that, I was kind of like thinking, I was like, like transporting myself back to there. Like, <laughs> yeah. Trying to like see all the games there and uh, like Golden Axe. I don't like Sega had oh, yeah. so many good games like yeah. uh, Altered Beast. Golden. Those would all be on my list for sure. Um, I also really liked Tubin as a kid. Okay. If you ever played. Tubin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a weird little game. Um, I'm just trying to think of other beat 'em ups because I feel like I'm just like it's a whole like '90s thing, like all the golden era. Yeah, like, yeah. Arcade people are gonna be like, "This is a podcast about arcade games." Uh, yeah, I mean all yeah all the Konami and the Capcom ones were really great. Yeah. Um, I know. You know, I I remember being at a. Chuck E. Cheese and doing like one of those like play choice play NES okay, like yeah. play choice stuff and not really comprehending like why this was I didn't really understand like like why wouldn't I just go home and play the NES like, I remember like, <laughs> right, being very right, confused right. as a kid as to what yeah. what was happening here um, but like versus Castlevania I would love to have one of those oh okay one of those cabinets okay that'd probably be on my list I don't have any Nintendo cabinets which is crazy um, but those are expensive now, so they have a versus, versus Castlevania yeah, at, uh, free play. at free play. Yeah. But I, I don't know if it's something with the joystick or, but it's like kind of impossible to play. Got it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's weird what I gravitate towards when I go there. Like I went with my sister and we just did all like the 
the rhythm games. Oh, okay. Just, like, way into that. But I went there with um, my friend Pat, who comes in the yeah. arcade, and we just like played all like classic stuff. Like he's really into like Space Duel, and no one is ever playing that game. And <laughs> it's actually a really fun, co- like two player game. Um, so we just play that a lot. But I don't know pinball people. I need to get some pinball machines. In oh there, yeah. But I don't know yeah. if that. Yeah, it's part of the arcade cabinet conversation. We um, we did well. We we actually just did our last uh, our last team brothership episode. We did Jockey Crush pinball, mm. and uh, and John's brother Tim was on that, and oh, okay. he, he gave a lengthy talk about the history <laughs> of, of pinball. Was, That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I you know, pinball wasn't super big where I grew up, but it's very big here. In the, the yeah. Floor. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely um, as as Tim explained. All of you should listen to the <laughs> that that episode yeah, yeah. and hear about the history of pinball. It's it's got a, a rich and storied history. I've seen some of the old like wooden like, oh yeah ones like yeah. for sale, and this is pretty pretty amazing to think about that. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I think Tim. I think John had said Tim is trying to buy a pinball machine, but it's like that's. That's a real investment, yeah. and you know you've been talking about fixing arcade cabinets. Like, how many more moving pieces are there in pinball? Like, yeah, it seems super intimidating. Yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, again, it's like a whole. That's a whole other thing with its own like kind of story, like different eras of different right. types of ones and whatnot. And, and then in the end, you know, I just want to buy like a brand new ten thousand dollar like Venom one or something. Yeah, I mean, and pinball's even more complicated because, like, you know, you've been talking about how you can kind of swap out boards or things. Like, you definitely can't swap out the components of, like, a pinball table. Right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah, and... Yeah, it's like a whole other world. Like, I don't know. There are some beautiful pinball machines out there, though. There are. Yeah. Yeah. No. There's some. There's some cool stuff. They have a lot. They do have a lot over at uh, at Free Play too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a really cool Venom one. Oh. That is making the rounds right now. I think okay. it's like a limited release. I don't okay. know. All these arcades that I follow on Instagram, <laughs> all of them posting it. But it is a really cool looking pinball machine. So. Is is there a whole is there a whole like community of arcade owners where you like? swap stories and and uh if there is i have not broken into that community (laughs) yet uh but we i we probably all follow each other on instagram i definitely follow a lot of arcades on instagram um which which is cool like i think i don't know kind of like the loop all the way back to kind of like what you were saying at the beginning of like the scale of different arcades and whatnot i mean there's definitely a lot of bar arcades but um I don't know, in kind of like one of those threads that I read kind of at the before I started that was like, oh, what to expect when opening an arcade? Yeah. A lot of them were like, oh, you definitely need like at least 20 machines or else you're not going to make your money back or you need like 100 <laughs> machines and oh whatever. I was like, I kind of like, I did like a little bit of like business planning with it all. Sure. I was like, I think 10 is a good number. Like you can maintain 10. You can, It's enough to fill to fill out your space and whatnot and um i've noticed a lot of other there are a lot of other arcades out there that have around like 10 to 20 sure. machines so um i don't know maybe it's it's not gonna be like this thing you don't you know, or that you rarely see all the time yeah i think i think you are gonna see a lot more at this scale perhaps but yeah i mean it, it's it seems like there's there's room, you know, if you can keep the overhead low, that there's yeah. room for something, you know, at, at this level. Um, especially with, you know, if you're going to have, like, the game trading you right. know, side business or something else yeah. to, to supplement it. Um, if you're able to kind of, like, use your own collection in different ways to kind of supplement right. things. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, I mean, I would love to have, like, 50 machines, but... <laughs> I don't know. At some point, I, I don't know. I, I always want to talk about. I always keep finding myself wanting to comment about like repairing them and how they've actually done a pretty good job, not needing a lot of work. But I also, What's... I'm pretty sure I just jinxed it, and they're all going like, to break tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, they just nothing turns yeah, back right, on again. Right. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, you'll just have to gradually, like, expand and overtake the other stores in right. this, in this <laughs> right. plaza. Yeah, 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 <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, until I get, like, a, the Jurassic Park. Right, game. yeah. Machine in here. <laughs> or what's that, um, there's, there's one in Japan that's, like, House of the Dead 4, where it's, like, a booth that you go into that, like, the chair rotates oh, around. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, like, yeah, <laughs> I just the, at the the mall, the only mall near here. Oh yeah, they have the Batman one, oh, which is actually yeah. really cool. But it's also like everything I was saying earlier on about how it's like molded plastic. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. It also looks weird because it's it's like it's like this arcade has like one of those basketball like oh, shooting machines, yeah. and then the Batman arcade <laughs> game. That's like pretty much the only thing in there. But yeah, they take up all the space. Yeah. I saw it when I was in. Um, when I was in Cincinnati last year, I went to an arcade and they had uh, Fast and the Furious arcade oh, yeah, cabinet, yeah, yeah. which yeah. I didn't even know that I didn't play it, but I didn't even know that was like a thing. Yeah, um, there's a new Turtles cabinet or arcade game too. Really? Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's not just the one that they released. It's not Shredder's Revenge. No, no, no. no. Oh, it, I didn't know that. Um, no, because I was looking. One of my friends back in Oklahoma was telling me about it because um, he has like nephews and they go to like. The Dave and Buster's type places, and they had it there. And then I went online to look to see how much it cost. It was like ten grand oh, for geez, one of them. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Thanks. it's like I haven't played it. I'm sure there's like footage of it online. But yeah, there's a turtles, a brand new turtles mo- machine. All right, and a Fast That's, and Furious. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I probably should have tried the Fast and the Furious, but I don't. I don't care yeah. for driving games. So. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's all like light. I mean, that's that's the other thing too right a lot of the newer stuff is all like licensed i mean i guess everything yeah. was licensed i'm looking around there's like simpsons and spider-man and whatnot but i don't know the new movie licensed <laughs> stuff just i don't know just doesn't seem the same i mean if they if they made an avengers like beat them up nowadays that'd probably be pretty cool right but it would have like a chris evans sprite and a i don't know who tony robert dunning jr or whatnot i don't know chris evans grew up around here you that's know? right that's yeah. right uh, his dad was like a dentist or something. Yeah, yeah. You should, should get him. You should get him to uh, to do like a <laughs> signing at the, the arcade. arcade. Yeah, <laughs> that would be yeah. amazing. I would take that. I <laughs> yeah, would, I would play a Chris Evans beat him up all day long. <laughs> he came here and uh, yeah. endorsed the arcade. There we go. We'll get those kids at uh, that university to make one. Right, exactly. Can, can use that to try to, you know, uh, petition for uh, yeah endorsement. Uh, yeah, no, I think, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we I, we sufficiently talked about, like, <laughs> the future of arcades or whatever, but, um, <laughs> I, just, I just keep wanting to say something super sarcastic. Like, no. They're all going to die. <laughs> well, I mean, you got your day job, right? We both have day jobs. That's true, so yeah, yeah. We can, we can always, if everything falls to pieces just rally to that yep well on that on that hopeful <laughs> note <laughs> our kids are all gonna die we'll uh i think we'll i think we'll wrap up so um so yeah thanks for thanks for joining me for this episode thanks for sharing your knowledge of arcades for for talking to folks about that they can come down here and we'll, we'll post a link in the, the video description so everybody can just storm down to material yeah no just um spend all their money yeah there you go that sounds great no uh thanks for having me on the podcast and yeah if anyone is ever in the worcester area come on down to materia so thank you <laughs> it'll probably still be here it will despite... probably still be here <laughs> <laughs> so unless all the machines break overnight so. yeah yeah all right folks so uh until next time this has been mike with team brothership and i will see you real soon Have a great week.